So what I've done today is I've boiled it down to its essence, three keys. And there's a lot of information. There's not a lot as in there's a lot of different details, but there's just a, a lot of things that I usually like to do to help you to understand and kind of flesh out those points. But today, I'll this will be just think of it as a high level and we'll go through it. I just want to make sure that you understand the concepts because once you understand the principles, then, you know, it'll make sense to you. And then you can go out and you can begin to make things happen for yourself. But I like to think of the, these three keys as being, you know, how to get heard, how to get found, and how to get hired. Those are your three objectives as a voiceover talent. You've got to be heard. You know, what are they going to hear? And they've got, they've got to find you once you have something that they can hear. And then how do you close that deal? How do you get hired? And uh, maybe I'm oversimplistic, but I, I believe less is more. And I don't believe the voiceover business, I don't think any business is that terribly complicated. Don't misunderstand me. It's, it's work. It's hard work. And if, but if you're willing to put in the work using a, you know, a simple system, you can be highly successful. So let's talk about the first key. And that is, you have to be heard. Well, okay. Well, what does that mean? Well, there are two things that you need to focus on when it comes to being heard. One is the quality of your audio. I cannot tell you how many people that I've, I've worked with who have come to me and they, you know, they share their, their sad story of, well, I've been doing this for, you know, for so long, uh, you know, I've got my demos, I've auditioned 500 times, nothing's happening. What's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a suck at this. I'm terrible. I've got to quit. Well, the first thing I do is I listen to their, to their audio from their studio and eight times out of 10, it's just bad. Uh, and this is not the purpose It's beyond the scope of this webinar to teach you how to do that. But what I'm telling you is that's the first thing you've got to get right. You've got to get your audio right. So you've got to have a high quality audio, <clears throat> excuse me, because clients have so many people to choose from that if you can't get past that, I'm not, I'm not even to your skill level yet. I'm just talking about your audio quality. If you can get that right, you're ahead of like 80% of the crowd already. So if you haven't yet, uh, and, you, and that's not your background, then I get it. For most people, it's not. You know, hire somebody, a consultant or a coach who specializes in that so they can help you because it, well, I'll give you more details on that in just a moment, but, th but that's the first part of it. The second part is it's the quality of your performance. And that's the thing that we all know. So here's the thing about audio quality. And this, here's the fake out. It's not your microphone, probably. And people love gear. They love, people love equipment. They love to watch videos about equipment. They love to join forums about equipment. They love to discuss the nuances of the, of the, uh, the compressor, even the cables that they use. I mean, people love gear. And I'm not saying that critically because I get it. Um, uh, you know, I love to, Kyle and I were talking earlier and, you know, Kyle is a competitive golfer. I am very much a recreational golfer, but I've golfed since I was 13 and I love it. And there's something, and I know better, but I have this feeling that when I get new golf clubs, I just think things, it's just going to change everything. And I just bought a new set again this year, thinking, you know, one last chance. And I've been doing this for how many years? A lot of years. I can't tell you how many sets of golf clubs I've gone through. But I bought this beautiful new set of golf clubs. And it was tailor-made P790s, and they're the, they're the black with the black charcoal black, uh, you know, shafts. You know what I'm talking about, Kyle. Oh, and definitely. I thought, I've looked at those sure myself. <laughs> this will do it, right? Yeah. I've sucked up to this point, but now I've got some awesome clubs. You know, I've got my Sim Max driver and my Fairway Woods. And I am, man, I'm, I, you know, I'm even I bought the $4 a piece Taylor made golf balls. I thought, this is it, man. No, I suck as bad now as I did before. It, it wasn't, it wasn't my golf clubs. And I'm telling you, it's not your, your microphone. Um, and a lot of people, and the reason I bring it up is because people obsess over this stuff. I started my career with literally, it's a $50 microphone, a Marshall uh, MXL microphone, 50, 60 bucks you could buy online. Uh, I, I ended up, I, I built a six figure income and recorded national ads with that microphone. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not telling you to cheap out, just go get the, the, you know, the cheapest crap you can get and you're going to be fine. You need to make sure it sounds good. But, but what I am telling you is just outfitting your place with $10,000 worth of gear is not going to make you any more competitive than anybody else. As a matter of fact, it might make it worse because the better the equipment, the better your space has to be. And the space is what makes audio good. If your space is right, you can get by with less expensive audio equipment. Uh, and eventually as you spot make on. money, what's that? I said that's spot on. 
All right, yeah, if I can get an amen every now and then, that's fine. Feel free to <laughs> feel free to throw that in. But your yeah, your recording space has to be right. What do I, what do I mean by that? It has to be quiet and it has to be acoustically well treated. Those are the two things. And if you can get that, it's it's not easy. I get it. Um, you know, I live in a house now where um, the basement. We recently moved here. The basement's not finished. I can't use it for recording. It you know the the HVAC system is loud down there. So I'm sitting on the main floor with a window to the outside in a new neighborhood where they're building a house across the street. For goodness sakes, but when they're when the when the trucks aren't there, it's great. So I learned to work. You know, you dodge in between sounds. My dog's barking. And, you know, and it hasn't hurt my income. My my point is, you can work around that, but you have to have a quiet space, one that's well treated. All right, everybody deals with it, everybody. So don't don't feel sorry for yourself and don't get depressed. Just know that, you know, that this is part of the gig, but you've got to get it right. Um, and I and I won't go through all the details here. And if you get the recording, you can, go, you can go back and look specifically about some of the things that you can use to help you with that. But those are two things that you do have to get right. And I will mention this. I wanted to mention, you know, I said, it's not your microphone, but you can't there you can help mitigate some of the issues you have by the microphone that you do have. The mic that I've been using for probably the past dozen years is the Neumann TLM-103, which you see here. I love it. It's a great, you know, I graduated from a $50 to a $1,000 microphone because I could afford it, you know? So I thought, hey, why not? Why the heck not? So I did, and I love that microphone. The problem with it is it's highly, highly sensitive to sound pretty much 360 in all directions. And in my situation and environment, that is not ideal. So one way that I'm uh, dealing with this excessive noise is that I bought a shotgun microphone. In this case, it's a Sennheiser 416. You don't have to spend a thousand bucks. Not, and that's not what I'm suggesting. But what I'm saying is a microphone like this that's highly directional can help mitigate some of these issues. Um, you know, so when the trucks across the street are, you know, they're moving earth. I mean, literally, they're digging up huge swaths of real estate and the banging of hammers. Something like this can really go a long way. Uh, and now there's even software to help with this kind of thing. But software is a last resort. It's not it's not the first thing that you do. Um, and I think that's probably all I need to say about to say about equipment. I do want to talk about your performance. And this is the thing I think that most people focus on. And they think, well, if I can just, if I'm just good and talented, I can be successful in voiceover. And again, that in and of itself, I mean, don't get me wrong. You want, you want to develop your skill, but I cannot tell you how many people have reached out to me for help. Um, and I've, so I've asked, well, what's the issue? Tell me about yourself. And it's like, well, I've been doing this for X number of years. Well, I, I do some research and I find out they're world-class talent. Their demos are killer. They're represented by Atlas and some of the biggest agencies in New York and Los Angeles. And I'll say, when's the last time you worked? Well, two years ago, three years ago. Being a great performer in and of itself does not guarantee success. You really have to be well-rounded. You do have to develop your skill, regardless of your talent, which by talent, I mean God-given. Skill is the thing, you know, there's always somebody that's going to be better than you in everything, in me. I mean, it's just the way it is. I learned to deal with that a long time ago. But I learned that I can take what I've got, and if I work at it, I can develop it into a marketable skill. And so can you. So when you're tempted to think, well, I'm, you know, I'm not enough. I can't do it. I don't have it. I'm not as good as such and such and such. Just forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it. You just need some help to develop the, the, the talent the natural talent you have and to develop that skill into something that's, that's, uh, that's marketable, but you can keep, when it comes to quality of performance, keep it simple. And you've probably heard, you know, 150 different ways to be better. And that's good. You need to find the ones that work best for you. But the system that I use, I've boiled it down to four steps. I'm going to share these steps with you. And then we're going to come back to this in just a bit. And I'm going to give a few people a chance to read, and then I'll give feedback and coaching. And, um, the first three are, you have to make it personal. And then I have a 50% rule. And it's simply this, speak 50% slower and softer than you think you should. At least when you begin reading through the script, it may be appropriate to, to read it a little louder, a little faster, but always at least start going way slower and way softer than you think you should, because it will have an amazing impact on your read. The third is speak in thoughts and phrases. Every, most people that I begin working with, you know, they're trying to perform it and make it sound smooth and very, it's just one continuous smooth thought. There's never a break in thought. You have to acknowledge what you're talking about. And that's why I use punctuation as a chance. So I just speak in thoughts. I speak in phrases 
Because that's the way we speak in real life. That's the way we communicate thoughts. It's not one endless flow of a beautiful sounding voice. That is boring. They want to hear, they want to hear you speaking the meaning, the intent of the content. Again, more on that in just a bit. And then I have a bonus tip for you, and that's overtraining. See, I, I come from a, a training, corporate training background, and there's a concept called overtraining, and it works miraculously in, in voiceover. And I'll, I'll teach you more about that when we come back to it. Uh, and I've got some scripture I'll share with you in just a bit again, and we'll do that. But let's move on to the second key. Okay. You're going to get heard because you've got, now you've got solid audio, right? You figured out, oh, it's not having the great microphone. It's about having a great space to work in and adequate equipment. And then, you know, you can, you can move up as you can afford to do so, but you've got really good audio and you've, your performance skills are developing. So you've got a product and in business, that's where we, we start with a product, but having a product alone is not enough. People will not beat a path to your door because you have a product. You have to market that product. And you have to get, you have to be found. And by being found, I don't mean discovered. Give up on that. I mean, it happens once in a blue moon. You'll hear somebody who heard somebody. I heard of, a, I met a woman once who literally, she worked downtown Chicago. She worked in a clothing store on Michigan Avenue. A casting director from Disney happened to be in the store. Happened to hear her singing to herself. True story. And she ended up, she was invited to Orlando, yada, yada, yada. She was cast. I mean, that is a one in 10 million shot. That's, and when it happens, it's great. And if it happens to you, God bless you. I hope it does. But that's playing the lottery. That's not a business plan. So that's, the, you know, if that happens, that's great. But if that's your plan, it's like playing the lottery for retirement. That's a lousy retirement plan. Uh, you've got to have a systematic way of being found. And it is marketing. So what is the number one objective of voiceover marketing? What is the one thing that's, that's, that reigns supreme and is most important? It's to get your demo or demos on as many ears as you possibly can. That's why places like Voices.com exist. And thank goodness for it. Because prior to what, 2006 or 2005, you know, whenever you guys came along, uh, before we had the technology in place and platforms in place to do this, it was a very tedious and laborious effort. It could be done, but it, it certainly wasn't um, as easy as, as it is now to get your demo on ears. So when it comes to marketing, always be asking yourself, how can I get this demo or these demos in front of as many people as I can? And again, it's, it's beyond the time and scope of what we have today to go into all the different strategies to do that. But needless to say, there's lots of opportunities from a technological standpoint, platforms, uh, even direct marketing. I mean, I've got clients literally all over the world. I just finished a project this morning for a company in, in Brazil. I bet 24%, I'm not 20, 24, where did I get that? 25%, 24 uh, 24.7% of all my work literally comes from Europe. I've got you know clients in China, Japan. I've done video game work for a client in Russia. Uh, if you're saying, well, where do I market myself? Your eyes aren't open. I mean, a Google search will put you in touch with tens of thousands of content producers who hire voiceover talent. So your job is to get, again, your demo or your demos on as many ears as you can. A few thoughts about the demo. Uh, I always advise people to think of the commercial demo as the primary demo. Narration is a great secondary and, and or audiobook demo. Everything else is kind of tertiary. It's, it's niche. And the reason I say that, and you, you may be thinking, well, I want to be a character actor or I want to do e-learning or great. I'm, you know, 80% of all my work is e-learning, but you know how I get hired for that? It's my commercial demo. For, for some reason, and I've tracked this over the years, most people hire me for the stuff that I do, not based on my narration demo or e-learning. It's the commercial demo. They tend to go to the, I don't know why, and maybe Kyle knows why. Maybe you have answers or research. I don't, but that's where people tend to go first. So that's why, you know, start with a commercial demo regardless of what your career path you intended to be. Because it will, and you know, I always think broadly, you want to cast as broad a net as possible. When you're first getting started, as you go on, you get feedback, you begin to get clients, you know, then your career can begin to take a shape and you can kind of see where people like you. But when you're first getting started, you don't know what you're going to be best at. You don't know what people will like you the most for until you throw yourself out there. And in my opinion, the commercial demo is the best way to do that. Completely agree. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, Kyle.
Yeah. Um, you know, when you're brand new, uh, you know, folk, there are there. Are free, if you've got no money, you know, you can focus on there's free platforms. You know, are they going to get you in front of the most people? Well, probably not. But I'm just saying there's really there's no excuse. There's no excuse for somebody not to get started. Um, you know, then you can you can graduate into the more competitive platforms and the better your demos are, the better you know you will do on those on those platforms, because it's not just about cattle call auditioning. You know, everyone, when people think of Voices.com and platforms like Voices.com, they think, you know, well, how many auditions do I need to do to get a job? And that's certainly a part of it. But what a lot of people don't understand is that if your demos are really good and you understand how to position them, you will get people coming to you who find you on these platforms and hire you. I had somebody ask me yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I, I, I had recorded a promo. I do a lot of work for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I do promos for their upcoming shows and that kind of thing. And somebody said, well, how'd you get, you know, how'd you get that job? And it's been a few years I thought about it. it was, it was, you know, it was a pay to play platform. They found me on that, you know, and th that happens. It happens more, more often, you know, than you, than you would think. Um, direct marketing, you know, today I, I, I sent an email. I, I received an email from a, a video um, uh, production company. I, I, I actually tried to call them and I couldn't get an answer. So I just sent them an email and introduced myself. Um, you know, there's, there's no lack of opportunity for that. Certainly agents, but you know, agents used to be primary. You go back 20 years ago, agents were primary. Well, today, because of technology there, it's optional. You don't have to have an agent. You really don't. Now I've got some agents, um, I had, you know, and they can, they can come in handy. I would say 2% of my income is accounted for through agencies. I mean, it's a very small portion, but usually when they come through, it's, Pretty good. I had a had a job not long ago. Um, I got a call from an agent. I'd been with them for like 10 years. I'd never heard boo from them. And they say, Hey, I've got a job for you. It's like, hey, awesome. And it paid 2500 bucks. So great. Well, when the job was done two weeks later, they reached back out and said, Hey, they want it, they want to renew, you know, and run this longer. They're going to send you another check for 2500 bucks And I thought, well, thank you, agents. That's so there's a pl there's a place for them. And I always when I think of marketing, I think of a wheel with spokes and you need multiple spokes in that wheel to create a smooth, consistent and dependable ride. I want to know that I'm going to have the money every month to pay my mortgage and feed my family and pay for my cars. And having multiple spokes in that marketing wheel was what allows me to do that. If it was only depending on agents, like I said, I would have quit hungry and broke many, many years ago. OK, and then, OK. You've got to be, you got to be found, um, you got to be heard, uh, you got to be found. And then we're going to move on to be hired. But finally, on the found front, the second key, keep this in mind. People forget. People don't remember. There's a lot of competition for your attention, uh, for their attention. There, I forget. I used to know the stats. I used to teach this stuff. But people are bombarded with hundreds, if not thousands of messages every single day. And just because you sent an email to somebody three months ago, doesn't mean anything today. It means nothing today. So here's how I approach. And I think it's important, again, cast a broad net. Um, but you have to have a marketing. I really believe you have to have a marketing communication strategy in place. What does that mean? That means there's, there's two components to that. And that is, number one, when anybody gives me positive feedback, let's say I reach out to somebody, I point them to my website, my demo, they get back to me and say, oh, Bill, hey, you really like your demos. We'll keep you in mind. Well, you know, I can walk away and be excited and say, hey, they love my demos, but chances are I'll never hear from them again because they don't need me today. They might need me tomorrow. They might need me next year. But unless they remember me, they'll never contact me. So I put them in a database, like an Excel spreadsheet, literally, and then um, at least six times a year, reach out to them just to remind them that I'm there. It doesn't have to be complicated. We're talking two or three sentences in an email. It could be, Hey, happy holidays, you know, Thanksgiving just around the corner, just a moment to say thanks. I appreciate the opportunity, you know, to, to be your contact and hope we can work together in the near future. It can be super dead simple. Don't make it complicated. But remember, if you don't stay in touch with these folks, they will forget about you. And that is guaranteed. Okay, okay let's get you hired. All right, all the rest of this is fun. But like I said, if you're not getting paid, it's a hobby. And voiceover, as fun as a hobby as, as it may be, it's way more fun when you get paid. And my guess is if everybody is on this webinar is being honest, most would say, if given the chance, I would love to do this full time. 
And if I could do a show of hands, I'm going to guess 99% of you would raise your hands and say, yeah, if I could do this full time, absolutely I would. Well, you can. You just got to know how to do it. And here's one of my favorite pictures of all time. I think it applies so well. I don't know if you could read this. I'll read it to you. The back of this guy's shirt, he's running a marathon. 50, fat, diabetic, ahead of you. <laughs> That's what I always think of myself. Uh, I'm not diabetic, but the rest of the stuff, you know, there might be, might be some truth there. The point being, you don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the most gifted. You don't have to have the most beautiful voice. That's not what it's about. It's about how do you have, but how do you stay in the race and how do you keep moving forward? And uh, I actually have run a few marathons in my time and I used to do a lot of distance running and not so much anymore um, as I've gotten older and, you know, gained a little weight and I slowed down a little bit, but I, but I remember, and I'm not overly athletic. I'm not a fast person by all means, but I remember in my training, and it was just me, I just, I trained myself. I, I researched online and I just went out and did it by myself. And my, my key was putting one foot in front of the other, literally, that was my strategy. And I remember the old saying, how do you, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And I would repeat that to myself over and over as I would pound out mile after mile after mile. And I, my muscles would be screaming and I would just think one more step one more step. And if I keep repeating this one more step, I eventually will hit my destination. And I did, and I did it a few times. And I think it's very analogous to a business of any sort. And certainly in, in voiceover, I just want to get you past this idea that you've got to be like the best. You, know, you have to have this gorgeous voice. And even if you have a gorgeous voice, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. What, what does mean a whole lot is what you do with that voice, but how you market yourself to give yourself the opportunities. So communicate with your clients at least six times per year. I mentioned that. Manage your expectations. And I want to spend just a moment on this and then we'll go back and, and uh, you know, Kyle will get into to doing the reads. I think as I've reflected back on, I've been doing this full time now for about 15 years and coaching for the past 10 or, or 11 years. I've worked with a lot of, a lot of people. And as I, as I think back and I ask myself, what's, what's the big, what's do most people go wrong? Because you guys know, not everybody makes it. A lot of people, they give up along the way. And why is that? And I think it's because they didn't have the proper expectation and they didn't manage those expectations. Because if you can get your head right to begin with, your chances of succeeding go up, go up dramatically because the reality is I put my money on anybody in this webinar. I've been around long enough to know you can do this. It's not, it's not a question to me of whether you can do this or not. The question is, are you going to do this? And are you going to take the steps necessary to do it? Uh, and so you have to have the right mindset. And it's a, it's a long haul mindset. It is a marathon mindset. You know, if it was easy, the thing, same goes for everything. You know, if it's easy, you know, everybody would be doing it. But it is simple. It's not complicated. It's just a matter of doing the things that you need to do every day. And when you get tired, you still do it when everybody else was quitting because they did 100 auditions and didn't get a job. Well, you know, Welcome to the world of voiceover. That's just, you know, that's, and we could get more into that. I learned this in business. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the ways I put myself through, through college, uh, I sold books for a summer door to door. Oh my gosh, it was the worst job I've ever had in my life. But at the same time, it was the best experience. A company called Southwestern in, um, out of Nashville. And uh, they send you to a godforsaken town that's far from your home so that you don't leave. And I would knock on doors from eight in the morning until 9.30 at night, six days a week. That's 81 hours a week for anybody who's following along at home. And what I learned during that time, and it stuck with me ever since, is that I don't have to be the best salesperson or the best anything. All I have to do is be willing to knock on enough doors. Because let's say, let's say Kyle's more talented than me. And maybe Kyle only has to knock on five doors to get a sale. Well, I'm not as good as Kyle. I'm not as talented. I'm not as good looking as Kyle's. So what am I going to do? I may have to knock on 25 doors to get that one sale. But if I know that, and I only know that through experience and time, that just means I'm going to have to do 25 or end up being five times the amount of work. He, he does five calls or, or you know stops. I do 25. Well, if I'm willing to put in that time and effort, I can be just as successful as Kyle. And if I'm willing to do more, I can even be more successful. 
but I have to be willing to work those numbers. And it's going to be different for all of us. But as you get better and more skilled in executing not only your performance, but your marketing, your numbers will get better, just like a, a baseball player's batting average will get better over time. And then once you figure that out, once you know that, then you don't, you know, you don't feel so much rejection. It's okay, well, I move on to the next audition. I move on to the next phone call. I move on to the next email. And if you develop that consistency, it's just wash, rinse, repeat. It's not sexy, it's not glamorous, but it's how work gets done. It's how businesses are built. You wash, you rinse, and repeat. And at the end of the day, you've got yourself a profitable voiceover business, which is what you were shooting for the whole time. And then that's my, uh, my coaching website, which has additional trainings, like a training video you can watch there if you're interested to find out more, buildawiselive.com. Um, Kyle, that's, I think I'm pretty much right on time. So I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, your, your timing on that was was very good. And I just wanted to echo that uh, last point uh, you made there. Obviously, lots of uh, gold nuggets there throughout it. Um, but I think the, the last part, uh, you know, with regards to the numbers game, a lot of people, um, even on the platinum tier will ask me, oh, well, what are the, uh, you know, top earners doing differently? And it's, you know, a lot of people, you know, will look at booking ratios. And a lot of times their booking ratios are very competitive. It's the difference of they're giving themselves three to four times more opportunity, uh, you know, of getting those jobs. So those booking ratios start to close fewer and far between because instead of doing, you know, five auditions or 10 auditions a day, they're doing 30 auditions a day, you know, exactly. things. So that's what really sets them apart. And uh, so I'd agree with that. So if somebody's looking for one-on-one uh, -on -one training, are you taking students right now? Well, actually, no. Uh, what I am doing... <laughs> All my students go through it. There's a group program that I use. And the okay. only one-on-ones, I, I, I do some one-on-one through, through them, but I just because I can't because I'm, I'm recording full-time and then my other full-time job is coaching. And yep. so uh, so if you go to this website, you'll, you'll learn more about that. Uh, and I've got tons of free resources as well. Uh, so I'm not booking one-on-one -on -one outside of the people in the group right now, though. Okay, perfect. And uh, so that's where we'll leave it here today. So thank you, everybody who spent the time uh, to be with us. Uh, hopefully uh, you found some great tips here. Thank you so much, Bill, um, for doing this with us. Thanks, we Kyle. Appreciate it. You are a mentor to thousands of talent in the uh, industry there. So it was our pleasure to be able to do this with you. Uh, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime. And uh, until next time, everybody, hope you guys have a fantastic day and uh, happy auditioning. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya.